Today, I'm going to show you how to use the new canvas editor within my designs. I'll show you how the tool works in general, how you can sort of navigate it and create designs with it. And I'll also give you some examples of many different applications, whether it is mockups, how to create designs from scratch, and some tips and tricks with scalable designs and the canvas system as well. So lots to learn in this video. This is a new feature that will make my designs even more powerful. So let's get started and jump straight into it. So here I am in the my designs demo account on the dashboard page. And the first thing you need to know about the canvas editor is that it appears in many different areas. So you can find it over here on the sidebar canvas beta. And if we click on this, this is essentially a design tool, much like, you know, photo P Photoshop, except this is built into my designs. It has bulk functionality and also vector editing capabilities, which is really, really exciting. And it's got some other cool features like Dream AI built in that lets you generate AI graphics and remove the background all in one place. So, but more on that later on. So it appears in different places, first of all on the sidebar, but also in the listings tab. So if you click on this, if you have a, a collection with designs in it, you can choose or highlight any amount of designs and then the canvas system will appear up here. So that would open up the same system. Also, it appears during the publishing process. So whilst you're publishing designs, you're configuring the prices and the colors, you can still open up the canvas editor there and adjust the placement of your designs. If it's sort of too big for the print area or too small, you still got the choice later on. And one last thing, if you have editable designs, like these ones right here, I created these in the canvas system, then you can also click into this button over here. This little symbol will appear to open up once again the canvas editor with the editable design loaded. And here we've got the text field to change around or you could still resize the graphic and then overwrite the existing file that is saved right here within the listing. So those are the few areas where you're going to find this canvas editor. There's a lot of different ways to use it. But first of all, I'll go over the basics, explain to you what all of these different fields mean, how you can sort of navigate this and sort of move about in this tool. So first things first, let me add a bit of text right here just as a visual reference point. And then to maneuver around this canvas and around your design, you can do a few things. So hold down space on your keyboard, you'll see the mouse cursor changes to a hand. And then if you click and drag, you can move like this. Alternatively, you could click this hand symbol right here. And that will also change your cursor into a hand. It's just that you have to go back and click on this. So I find it easier with the keyboard shortcut. Then another thing you can hit control on your keyboard and then zoom. This will zoom into text as you can see, it is crisp it is a vector format, which is brilliant and scroll out as well to get away from it. So space bar, move around and then zoom into any area with control. Those are some handy shortcuts for maneuvering. And the next thing you need to know is when you get started designing something in here, you will always want to begin with the actual canvas settings. On the right hand side, you've got the background color, which um, this is just depending on what sort of design you're creating. If you want to create something for dark t-shirts, change that to black. You can also click the eye symbol to have this checkered sort of transparency pattern. But don't worry if you have a color enabled, you can still save it as a PNG. You don't have to actually turn this color off to get a transparent PNG file. Then we've got the size of the canvas. So if you want to design t-shirts, you know what to do. Just put in four, 500 and uh, 5,400. That will give you the right dimensions. Hit enter on this and I messed it up because I didn't hit enter on the first one. So there we go. We've got our t-shirt dimensions set up, but alternatively click back on the canvas. You can also go into the templates section. So let's say you want to sell a specific product, not a t-shirt. We could search for it in here. So ornaments as an example, didn't spell that right. It will bring up the My Designs catalog of products and whatever they sell, you will find right here, click on it and it will apply the dimensions to the canvas system to match that product type. So 1092 pixels across and now you can see the text appears a lot bigger. You can also do it with t-shirts. So Bella 3001, I could enter that in here and then we've got the old t-shirt dimensions back. So that is going to be a first step in most cases. So you're designing at the right scale and the text section, I already briefly showed you this, you added text with this button, you've got some presets in terms of text styles that you can add. And with a text layer, you've got a few options right here for different things to to edit. So these are alignment buttons 
to align any object to different places in your canvas. Then you've got the font choice. This has got a lot of Google fonts in it. You can search at the top for Pacifico, for example, that's a nice one. And I believe they're adding more fonts to this soon, as well as the ability to upload your own font as well, which would be handy. You can resize any object as well as the text with this bounding box. You can increase the text box like this out to the side. And if you've got it smaller, then the text will split into the separate lines. You can even rotate objects like this and control Z, by the way, undoes the last step or goes a step backwards. And then over here, you've got some more font settings. This is the size. Is this the letting? I'm not even sure. But to be honest, I don't know what these two affect because I've not used those. Okay, so that is the kerning. I forgot what it's called now. And that is probably the space in between. Yeah, there we go. That's the space in between lines. So there we go, change that back to 10. Still way too big. There we go. Still getting used to this as well. It's not exactly the same as it would be in Illustrator and Photoshop, but it makes it easier that you've got it in here. So then we've got left align, center align, right align, color of the text, and you can also add stroke. So appearance panel, it's got opacity settings for the text, which I wouldn't really recommend if, you, if you're designing t-shirts or anything with print, don't use opacity on its own, only if it's overlaid somewhere. And then we've got stroke effect down here to give this a custom color and then increase the stroke size. You can also add a shadow. Again, this is more applicable if you if you're adding text to mock-ups perhaps not so much if you want to print something like i wouldn't add a shadow to a t-shirt design like that but you can also do it without the blur right you can offset the text slightly kind of like this so that's actually a useful function to make your text look a bit more intriguing so that's it in terms of the text side of things within the canvas system let's head over to uploads in here, you can upload your own custom graphics that you get from wherever. So whether it is mid journey, if you've got some pre-made graphics somewhere else, AI graphics, you can always import it. Just drag and drop the file into here. They will appear in a list. You can click on it and then it will load into the canvas and you can resize it like this. You can reflect it with this button, do the same upwards as well, put it upside down, and you can use the alignment functions as well. By the way, before we move on to the next tab, you have also got the options to download the design to your own device or save it into a collection. So whichever folder you've got selected at the top right here, if you click on this, you can, you can customize um, or add a new folder or change whichever folder you've got selected. Whatever you've got up here, that is where you're going to save the designs into you just give it a name you select the file slot and then the format right here is going to be png most of the time save it as editable if you want the ability to still edit text and stuff like that later or save it as a personalizable product so that is worth bearing in mind to enable that before you save to a listing like this so those two buttons are quite important but let's move on to the next tab over here which is elements. So this elements tab is essentially like a mini creative fabrica inside the canvas editor. And you've got 10,000 graphics right here available to you and add them to your designs, use them commercially. And these are all in vector format as well. So we've got vintage sunsets, we've got lots of niche specific graphics, decorative elements, loads and loads of stuff. You can also search by category at the top or type in a specific search term, like let's say dogs, and then scroll down, choose your graphic. And once you click on it, it will appear on the the artboard like this. You've got the color options on this side because it is vector format. You can easily adjust and affect any of these colors. You can also turn them down in the opacity. So if you wanted to hide any objects on your design, in this case, it doesn't make much sense, but you know, you could turn this down um, essentially. Let me find a better example. So if you didn't want this, these uh, cats right here crossing a road, if you don't, didn't want the actual crosswalk in there, you just select the color, turn it down and there we go, it's gone. So that's a nice way to quickly affect these vector graphics. And yeah, that's it in terms of this elements tab. Photos is similar, except we've got pictures from Pixabay right here on the left. Once again, lots and lots of choice. And you've even got the ability to add masks to these. So let me show you a quick example. Let's find a nice photo right here. Maybe this one with the boats. And once we've got this on the canvas, we can click onto the masks tab right here on the top, choose one of these presets. Let's say we want this one. I'll just increase the size of this and then I'll drag the image over the mask until you can see it inside of the mask. Let go. It might open up like 
this small, I think it's a bit of a glitch. Just double click on this and there we go. Now you can adjust the mask and resize this. And if you click out of it, then you've got this a neat little mask right here that you can once again incorporate in your designs and uh, use to place pictures within or even AI graphics, AI images. If you've generated them, you can easily adjust them with your masks, which is really cool. Moving on, we've got the shapes. This is very quick and straightforward and handy for mock-ups as I'm going to show you in a, in a quick example here in a minute. So just click on any of these shapes, you can resize them and they are in a vector format once again so you can rotate them you can do whatever you want with them change the color right here add a stroke etc etc i think you get the gist by now and the last thing would be dream ai so dream ai now works inside the canvas editor you've got text to image image to image and depth to image text to image let me show you a quick example you can choose a style right here let's do maybe anime for a change we can do instead of sdxl i'll choose dali 3 because it is an option and i, I could just show you and here you have got control over the aspect ratio the quality do standard or hd you type in a prompt let's actually use this one that kurt has used before with the other models let's see what dali 3 brings back in comparison uh, we'll hit dream right here Going to load for a little while. Let's see what uh, Curtis did previously. So those graphics do look interesting. Do look like something you would find on Creative Fabrica, to be honest. So let's get rid of those for a sec. And here we've got the Dal E3 result. And I'm actually curious now. Has it got a white background? It does yes it almost looked like it was transparent then so essentially what you can do now because this has a white background attached you can go into effects over here and you can click remove background then this is using the clip drop functionality very accurate in most cases not always but it is one of the best automatic background removers out there and there we go now we've got the graphic without the background and considering that this is quite a complex graphic to remove the background from it did do a decent job in my opinion very very cool indeed and i believe they are also going to add to this effects tab the ability to upscale and the ability to vectorize your graphics on top of that. That way you've got all the AI functionalities here and you will also be able to use all of the other bulk features that my designs has in terms of image modifications, which is bulk overlaying color, textures, pattern effects, all of that stuff will come to the effects window as far as I'm aware. So that's it in terms of Dream AI. You can quickly create loads of graphics in here, remove the background, add them to your designs and you can create AI t-shirt designs or sticker designs, whatever you want inside of my designs with DALI 3 and SDXL at the moment. Now, once you're done creating a design, obviously this is not really done, but once you are, you can once again download it to your device or store it in your collection like this. So now I'm going to show you three examples of what to do with the canvas editor and how it gives you more power with your print on demand business. The first thing you can do with it is offer personalized products for sale on Etsy through my designs in bulk. So all of these AI graphics that we've got right here, we can turn them into personalizable ornaments, for example. So go ahead, select all of these, open up the canvas editor, choose a template. So we'll type in ornaments. And by the way, you can also do this with other products. It, it doesn't just apply to ornaments. You can do it with mugs, stickers, t-shirts, posters, whatever. So we've got the template selected at the bottom right here. You can see all of the different listings that we have selected. That's what this means. You've got a button to close or collapse that window as well. But this way we flick through the listings. At the moment, they're all blank because we haven't added the designs to our canvas yet. So in order to do that, go to add listing file, choose the main file or wherever your images are saved that you want to add to the canvas system. Click add to all. And there we go. They've all been pasted in. We just need to adjust the alignment, make sure it actually covers this. We can align this with these buttons and then right click on the image, click sync. If we look at the bottom, there we go. It is synced that alignment to all the other images as well. And now it's just a matter of adding some text also that the customer can then personalize. So add text right here I'm going to use a bigger font, bolder font for this, make it white, add a little bit of a shadow. So maybe a stroke effect also in black. That way it is easier to read. And now you could have someone's name on the on here. And then you could hold alt down, drag down to duplicate that layer, hold shift to keep it in place. Actually, no shift doesn't work. That's just a, a Photoshop thing. Um, but uh, while holding down alt, you can duplicate layers and you've got the sort of guidance lines right here to stay centered. So your name, 
I could do 2023 as well, you don't have to add this, but it's just to show you that you can create these text layers, which later during publishing, you can select a personalizable. I have a separate tutorial on the full step-by-step -step process, which I recommend you check out. One more thing to note here is you want to select both of your text layers, right click and sync to once again, apply that to all the other designs as well. And then all you have left to do is save them. You can select save as editable right here. That's important if you want them to be personalizable, you have to save as editable file, click save, yes, overwrite. And now that job has been added to the queue and these will update in a second with the text added and the ability to further edit this because you know the placement is not ideal on these words to be honest it does cover the truck in many cases but it just shows you the process for setting up a template that would work for a personalizable design another thing you can do with the canvas editor is actually affect all of your designs and sort of reuse them especially if you have scalables this has been really handy for me so far so i've got i think like 15 or 16 designs right here you can do it with up to 120 if you wanted to i've tried it it does work and then what if i wanted to add a bit of text to this right this just says retired accountant it's a bit bland we can add a phrase to all of these designs in bulk just select all of your listings go to the canvas system once again to start out with the template so let's type in 3001 click on the bella and now we've got those dimensions applied to all listings then we can once again click add listing file add to all just resize this or place it correctly center it like, like with the alignment tools right here and then what i'm going to do is i'll sync this first of all so we've got the same layout for each of these also i'm going to add a bit of text to this pull it to the bottom and i could write not my problem anymore dot 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 and this box needs to be adjusted slightly there we go you probably want to change some of these settings right here so change this to maybe 0.8 select a, a different font as well there we go is that the best font for this i don't know but it looks kind of interesting so I center align this and then change the color to white or maybe actually what i would usually do is i would color pick something from the design and let's see what it looks like with a black canvas it would be posted on a black t-shirt suppose on the hide this yeah i think that looks quite interesting or you could do maybe a blue also maybe that's quite neat so i think you get the gist there this way you can add a phrase and oh, the main part is you can sync it across so in this case i'll right click sync wait a few seconds and now here we go every single listing now has that phrase attached you've essentially got a new set of scalable designs that you can once again save in bulk like this you don't have to make it editable in this case i suppose but you can if you want to change the phrase in future again and then save it as a png to all of your listing slots so let's hit save actually that's overwriting the main file you have to bear that in mind if you want to keep a hold of the main then save to another file slot save this and in bulk we're going to have affected 20 listings i've done this in a slow format you can do this in like 30 seconds just your designs you could add elements to these as well if you've got some old old scalables some old bunches of designs and you want to add some vintage sunsets or a specific backdrop maybe it's like some sort of grunge texture or a bit of a brush in the background just to to make like a dark design applicable to a different t-shirt background color there's just so many ways to use that that method right here and now i've got the original and the next slot if i double click on it i've got all the new designs right here ready for download you can also download them with all actions download a zip just select the right file slot and you're good to go and lastly there's also a way to edit your mock-ups add some text to them to make them stand out in search results here we've got some ornaments with personalizable text i'm going to select all of these you can do it with more than four objects by the way and then open up the canvas editor now there's a little bug right here because this system is brand new that will be i think uh, mitigated very soon so at the moment if i want to change these dimensions by hand it won't apply to all listings unfortunately you can't sync it so for mock-ups what i would do is type in 2000 by 1500 and that would apply right here and make sense but if i click on the next listing it still has the old dimensions and i can't actually hit sync i think curtis is aware of this and they are fixing it so if you're watching this in the future it should be sorted but the idea is that essentially you want to add right here one of the mock-ups so instead of the main design file you want to choose the mock-up file when it says add listing you want to add that to all resize or position it so it's in the center and, and then you would normally sync this across your other artboards in this example because of the glitch it doesn't work just yet but that would be the next step you sync it and then you can add elements or shapes shape might be the easiest for this process you can add a little bar like this right here for example resize then we could add some text onto this make it a different color obviously and then 
per, or maybe customizable. Make this a bit bigger, a bit wider also with these settings right here. And you could make this box in the background red. There we go. That way it pops in search results and people can clearly see that it is customizable. You can also add, I don't know, another little shape like a circle in the top right corner. You could say something like, let's just copy over this text. By the way, can you see how it is in the background? There's another tip right here. Right click on the text layer, make to front. There we go. That's been added to the front instead. We could do something like 40% off. There we go. And we could once again change the color here to grab some attention. This is just a very swift, quick job. Could look a lot better. You can add some effects to this, stroke shadow, change the font and make it look a bit nicer. But you get the gist, right? Before you just had a, a plain mock-up with faint text that's not as easy to read and make out. If you have these big things, they are going to draw an attention. People know they get a discount. People will know it's customizable straight away rather than having to think too much and just scroll past your listing. And you can once again sync all of these, just highlight them. You can hold down shift to sort of highlight or select multiple objects, right click on them, sync, and it would apply to all the other listings as well if the glitch wasn't there. And then you've got all of your mockups customized in bulk as well. You just have to hit save once again up here to have it overwritten and saved to your listing file slots. If you want to learn how to create personalized ornaments, which is selling really well right now on Etsy, make sure to check out this video next where I walk you through the step-by-step -step process.